Hey there, my name is Sanjalita Singh and welcome to my channel and thank you to those who have subscribed today to hear my story. Um, it's actually my health journey story and I keep looking down because I have my notes here. Um, I don't want to forget anything. I, I wrote this down a long time ago and I had shared it on um, one of the carnivore posts and someone said I think I should share my story out wide like on YouTube so I thought okay here we go so so again um, I am uh, 46 years old um, I am a mom of five sons and a wife and our it's gonna be nine years for our anniversary October 16th so our anniversary is coming up so um, so yeah let me get into my health journey um, I may have to take a few breaks here and there. I mean, I've never done a long video like this before. I mean, to me, it's long. I've only done like makeup tutorials to kind of gain my confidence, you know, to be behind the camera and share my story. Um, so yeah, so I may have to take a break here and there. So just bear with me. I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. I don't want to bore anybody, but this is my story and what had worked for me. Um, no offense on any other, um, diet regimens or whatever you guys do out there I mean hey if something works for you great I mean if paleo works for you great if the whole 30 works for you great if you know vegan works for you great you know I'm not putting down anybody's you know um, diets or, or eating plans or whatever I mean I'm just telling you what worked for me so anyway so let's get started um, so here's a tiny story of our health journey which is my husband and I now, um, when we got married back in 2010, he's he's always been the health freak, so let's put it this way. Um, so when we got married, you know, that was when I was heavier, I was 255 pounds. Um, so I wanted to be the perfect wife, where, you know, I had dinner cooked when he came home, and I did. Um, so dinner was cooked very high fat, very high uh, in carbs, and of course the dessert chocolate cake and he would come home and say I don't know if I could have that cake you know because he was the health freak and uh, you know and I'd get offended like well why you know I took all this time making this cake for you and, and us and our family and he says you know I just don't eat you know um, those kind of foods so I, I took it offensive I mean I was highly offended and um, he was eating carbs and stuff you know but just like the foods I was making was um, a lot of fried foods and that he didn't eat because the type of health freak he was back then was kind of like chick boiled chicken breast I mean it was just dry meat and he would eat carbs so like kind of like the boiled chicken breast and um, you know rice and, and roti in our language is like you know pita bread um, so he would have that like a couple of those and um, what else so yeah so just basically just the rice the roti and the meat, oh vegetables, lots of vegetables. So lots of vegetables were in his diet. So that's what he would eat. And he would eat like seven meals a day, you know, seven small meals a day to kind of keep his physique. So anyway, so, so one day I thought, hmm, I'm gonna start following him to the gym. <laughs> I wanted to be fit like him. So back in 2012, I was doing great. I was losing a little weight here and there. I was regaining my confidence back after being in a terrible marriage for 19 years. Then all of a sudden, my world crumbled on me. Um, my mom had passed away. She was 63. She had, um, she had a sudden heart attack. So, but she was sick for a while. She had, um, she had diabetes and you know, diabetes leads to kidney disease. So everything just started failing and you know, her body just wasn't strong and um, she had like blockages in her legs and stuff so they had to do like uh, they had to do actually a few surgeries where they had to go up in her groin um, muscle up here and then go all the way down to her ankles I mean she, they basically slit her leg open to get the blood flowing again so she she was you know she had been through a lot so anyways um, so yeah so she was only 63 years old um, she had a sudden heart attack and you know diabetes took over her life um, you know, every day I had watched her decline, you know, and I, I tried to help her the best I could, but 
I myself wasn't educated yet on what what is the best diet. You know, we were going with what the doctor was giving her, the standard American diet. Mom, you're not supposed to eat this. You have to eat this. You can't eat that. You can't. I mean, she was just so confused where she just gave up to where I'm gonna eat what I want to eat. You know, that's how she was. And it was so funny. Um, so you know, we just let her eat what she wanted to eat. I mean, it just kind of came down to that. And especially we didn't even know ourselves what was right for us. So what we thought was that we were doing healthy. So yeah, so she had passed away with her stuff, stubborn self. And um, after she was gone, it, gone, something had clicked in me. And it was like, okay, you need to wake up and look at your health, young lady. <laughs> I was almost 40 when she passed away. So I think I was 39. 46 now yeah I was 39 yeah I wasn't 40 yet so I was 39 when she passed away so um, I told myself I don't want those health issues I want to be healthy for my five sons and husband my doctor even told me I was headed down down the road of my parents death as well so I knew I had to change something oh my dad had um, sorry my dad had also passed away in 2001. He was 62 with similar health issues. So anyway, so I knew I had to do something. And um, I Googled, <laughs> I Googled weight loss and about 100,000 weight loss gimmicks came up. You know how confused I was. I had no clue on which way to go. I wanted to be healthy, but just didn't know how. Started following husband. I really didn't want to eat seven to 10 times a day. So anyways. So anyway, so I read, I read, I did several diets, so we're gonna go through it one by one. Um, I read good reviews on this lemon water and cayenne pepper detox for rapid weight loss. Honestly, I had no clue what the heck I was doing. I was desperate and trying anything, even diet shots. You know those those diet clinics where you go in to get those shot those uh, I think it's those B12 shots. Yeah, I even started going and getting those B12 shots. And then they gave me um, these diet pills called Fentermin, Fentermin or something like that. And it's supposed to like suppress your appetite. And um, I was doing weight loss shakes, calorie counting. All I cared about was getting healthy. I was gonna do whatever it took. I mean, at that point, I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking that any of this stuff could have killed me. You know, being as strong as those pills were, I would get so jittery and, I mean, it was bad. I mean, yeah, so anyways. <laughs> so anyways. Um, I had um, also did that detox, that lemon and cayenne pepper detox for 19 days, no food, just lemon water five to seven times a day. I lost some weight there. I wasn't looking so puffy anymore, but now, but now what? That detox was over. So next, I did another detox for 21 days. It was a protein rich detox with foods like almonds, sunflower seeds, lentils, quinoa, I don't know if I said that right. Um, brown rice, split peas, and some whole grains, and ate plenty of those. Salads were great too. I'd use olive oil combined with lemon or lime juice at, as a salad dressing. Again, I lost some, well, some weight and felt, felt good. So now what, right? <laughs> so then I started to follow my husband's clean diet. High carbs, no fat, no salt moderate protein basically our food literally tasted like cardboard no joke so i started weight training with him but i trained seven days a week sometimes twice a day crazy right <laughs> i was a total gym slave and that and back in 2014 is when i lost 120 pounds so i thought i looked great my muscles were toned 2015 came well back in 2014 and I'm gonna post some of the pictures where you could totally tell where I was like this skinny like this skinny and I'm 5'7 and at 135 pounds I was this skinny I mean you could literally see the bones in my back and I thought I was healthy <laughs> you know I had lost the 120 pounds off of a 255 pound body <laughs> so anyways so um, back in 2015 um, we had moved into a house that had toxic mold that we didn't know of, of course. And um, almost instantly, I started feeling sick. I wanted to sleep all day. I didn't have strength to go work out. 
or even go to work or meal prepping because we used to meal prep a lot when we were doing that clean diet. So <laughs> um, my life was headed for the worst. I seen several specialists. They all said the symptoms were all in my head, but I knew that wasn't true. Sorry, I started getting a phone call. <laughs> but I knew that wasn't true, so. Anyway, so where did I go? Yeah, so they, um, oh yeah, so my hair started falling out. It was terrible. I mean, I was losing like gobs and gobs of hair. Um, I demanded the doctors do a full blood panel, which is when they believed the toxic mold had got me sick. My blood work, they did blood work for um, my ANA, which is my anti-nuclear antibodies. I mean, I didn't know what kind of blood tests to do. I just told them, just do something. There's something wrong with me. So um, the test came back positive. So instead of basically my immune system protecting me, it was attacking me, which is why I had became sick and started feeling sleepy all day and um, Sorry, my eye water, so I'm gonna mention that somewhere in the video here. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to sleep all day. I mean, I just didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go out, didn't want to meet people, didn't, just didn't want to do anything, not even go to church, anything. So anyway, so we had to get out of that house ASAP. So finally we did, but it took a month. My rheumatoid specialist put me on prednisone to suppress my immune system, but it wasn't helping. I had just kept gaining the weight back that I lost. Remember, I lost 120 pounds. Before I knew it, I gained 45 pounds out of that 120 that I lost. And my ANA titer level, levels were so high that the doctor thought I had lupus or cancer. He told me I had to keep taking prednisone to suppress my immune system. Yeah, that was a terrible journey that I had went through, you know, where I thought I was super healthy from losing all that weight, then ended up getting sick, you know, and my whole life had just changed. I mean, I, I didn't have the strength to do anything, anything. Um, not work out, not eat right. I mean, I just ate whatever. Whatever was in front of me, I just ate it, you know, which is another reason why I gained weight. It wasn't all the prednisone. It was just, I just didn't care anymore. I just was in so much pain. My body was in so much pain. Everything just went for the worst. So anyways, so back in 2016, my world crushed my soul again. I lost my, my oldest brother to liver failure. He was only 49. He didn't drink alcohol nor take drugs. He had, he, he had to have a full liver transplant that wasn't success, success, successful. Sorry. <laughs> um, he only lived a month after the transplant. He never even made it home from the hospital. He was in the hospital for that whole month before um, his heart just gave up on him. It was just too much, too much for his body. And um, <clears throat> he had, we believe um, he had um, a fatty liver. Um, he also wasn't taking care of himself. He was, he loved to eat a lot of food. So, <laughs> so yeah, which kind of messed up his um, liver, which is why he had to go through that road of getting that um, transplant and didn't work out just didn't work out the way he thought it was gonna work out the way we all thought it was gonna work out so he's no more so anyways um, I you know when he was alive I would try to help him out with his diet you know when I had found out he had liver problems but he said he wasn't strong like me to change his diet like like I was he just gave up and and a lot of people do when they find out they're sick with something they just give up like I did you know when I was sick with the mold I'm just like yeah whatever I'm sick now I'm done you know so which is understanding I, I don't think we should ever give up in life we should just keep trying especially we have loved ones behind us we have kids behind us we've got our husband we've got family we've got friends you know at least try to live for them and do the best you can so Anyway, so my journey grew even stronger after losing my brother, which is which was like my second dad. So, anyways, so I started reaching uh, or researching on my own again. <laughs> I started to tweak my diet again. <laughs> I tried the paleo diet and vegan, vegan, um, and again, 
I'm not trying to offend anybody here. I'm just telling you my story. So vegan was the worst. I started to lose a lot more of my hair and I was looking very unhealthy, like skin and bones. And my right, <laughs> my right eye tear duct or the drainage passage somehow got blocked. Several doctors and specialists went in and tried to open it, but no luck. They said that there's tissue damage due to the vegan detox symptoms, which was excessive phlegm I had. Um, when I had done the vegan diet for, um, on my 30th day, basically, you know, cause they say your body goes into a detox, I guess, after 30 days. Um, so on my 30th day, I started like coughing up a lot of phlegm and I thought, oh, this is good. It's cleaning me up, you know, I mean, which it probably was. So I was coughing, coughing up a lot of phlegm, constantly blowing my nose. And I mean, there were times where I had to like pull over if I was driving on the side of the road just to like spit the phlegm out. It was just nasty. So, but, so from the constant nose blowing, you know, all the time, all the time, um, it, which kind of ended up, um, damaging not my tear duct but the tear drainage system like which is right here which is why you just saw me a little bit ago take a tissue and wipe um so my tears have nowhere to go on my right eye basically yeah that's my right side <laughs> um so the tears have no place to go so they'll just fall right out of my eye like i have one crying eye so i have to keep tissue or a handkerchief with me at all times because it just leaks out and that was I think that was three years ago when I did the vegan diet. So, and then again, like I said, I was losing a lot of hair, so. And the, um, so the doctors believe um, that it was the vegan, you know, the phlegm that had caused the eye damage, which they tried everything, they can't fix it. So I'm probably just gonna be like this for the rest of my life, unless they come out with some kind of a new, um, procedure or something they could do to open it up um, they, they wanted to do another surgery but I just gave up I did like seven um, seven different procedures and none of them worked and my eye ended up to be like that big it was so much nerve damage and it was just didn't look good it wasn't good um, I said no I just need a break right now maybe it'll heal on its own I don't know so anyway so yeah so I have one crying eye so when you see me take that tissue up there think vegan <laughs> so anyway so back in 2018 just last year I came across the OMAD diet and what that is is one meal a day I started losing weight but I wasn't feeling good because I was having carbs and sugar in that one meal so um, I mean because they said hey one meal you could eat anything you want so I thought oh yes Twinkies donuts you know pizza fried chicken I mean you name it I mean it wasn't gonna hurt it was just one meal right soda so <laughs> anyways um, so anyway so yeah so then um, I started lo losing weight but I wasn't feeling good so I started to research more I came across this doctor named um, Ken Berry he's a friendly He's a friendly board certified family physician. So I started following him and I purchased his book called Lies My Doctor Told Me, Medical Myths That Can Harm Your Health. I read his book, which was a total eye opener for me. I watched almost all of his YouTube videos in one week or less than a week. After that, I was convinced to follow the ketogenic lifestyle like himself. I lost 16 pounds that first year I felt amazing. My hair grew back more healthier. I started to re regain my energy back and not to mention my blood work came back with flying colors. I wasn't borderline diabetic anymore. My blood pressure was normalized. My ANA numbers came down significantly. My doctor was amazed. She says, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. My ANA still on this day, still test positive, but at least the numbers have come down. That gives me some peace and motivation to keep going and feel amazing. I noticed after the holidays, I was a bit bloated and I wanted to, to say from holiday food, but because I did keep it keto, there was something else that I couldn't quite pinpoint. 
the month of January, which was this year, 2019, Dr. Berry announced that he was starting a 30-day carnivore challenge. So I thought, hmm, why not to try it out? Meat only, no veggies, no keto desserts, no sweeteners of any kind, just animal products with zero carbs. Because before I started carnivore, I was keto, and that's where I lost that 16 pounds. So, where did I go? Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so that month, so I went ahead and did the 30 days of um, the carnivore diet. And that month, just that month, I lost 10 pounds. The inflammation and, oh, I had plantar fasciitis too in my right foot. And that pain was even gone. So, and, and I even felt better than when I did when I was on keto. I felt better on carnivore. So right after carnivore, carnivore month, I went back to keto and instantly felt bloated. I thought, now what happened? <laughs> so I slowly reintroduced foods back and found it was vegetables that was causing the bloat. And I thought, what can it be? Sure enough, yep, it was the vegetables. So I kept the veggies, so I kept out veggies since January then came across this group that were doing extended fasts so i thought okay i can do this so i did it for three months so i guess from january february march april yeah so i did it for three months i did a 42 hour fast all the way up to a 72 hour fast no food only water not even coffee just water so I, and then I continued to lose weight that first week. I mean, I lost a lot of weight. I looked good, nice and trim. And um, something backfired. I wasn't feeling good again. The prolonged fast was stressing my body out again. Instead of losing weight, I started gaining weight and fast. And I started losing hair again. In those three months, I kept gaining weight and body fat how can that be when i wasn't even eating for days i thought i was definitely messed up by doing those prolonged fast i thought now what carnivore so i took out all the sweeteners and went back carnivore again almost a month ago zero carbs finally i found my my sweet spot no veggies no sugars, only red meat for me. And for me, that would be lamb. <laughs> so I realized, um, I think my camera only records 10 minutes and then it turned off on me and I was still talking. So anyways, I'm back. So I was, um, I stopped at red meat. Okay, so um, in my house growing up, um, my mom never cooked beef because um, our religion was, you don't eat beef so, so yeah um, so anyway so she never cooked it I mean I'm not in that religion anymore I'm not in any religion I am a Christian I'm a born-again Christian and I have a relationship with Christ it's not a religion anyways so I can't find myself to eat beef so my red meat is lamb so I eat a lot of lamb sometimes two pounds a day maybe three pounds a day so um, so yeah, so that's my red meat. I do have chicken, shrimp, um, bacon or eggs on the side. Sometimes I'll just do bacon and eggs for dinner. You know, it just depends how I feel that day. Um, I, I noticed one thing, I can't really do um, pork chops as much. When I do pork chops, it makes me sleepy. So I don't know if it's because of all the junk pork pigs eat and it's affecting me, you know, like how carbs would make me sleepy. I don't know, it's just weird. But anyway, so by, you know, by just taking out the sweeteners, going back carnivore and bam, I lost weight. Like my stomach, like people, it was so embarrassing. Somebody at the gym asked me if I was pregnant and I said no, because see, when I gain weight, it's right in my stomach. I mean, you will see my pictures. I look pregnant in the pictures. I'm not pregnant in any of the pictures. The last time I was pregnant was like 14 years ago and that's when I had my baby and that was it. There's no need for me to have a pregnant looking belly. So when somebody said that to me, I'm like, oh my God, it's showing on the outside. You know, I've got to do something about this. But, um, 
but yeah so taking out the keto sweeteners the keto desserts you know um, a lot of the dairy you know because I was doing a lot of dairy with keto um, you know because you know they they do what cheese and cream cheese the regular cheese you know I was doing a lot of butter different things you know so I kind of took all that out and just ate the fatty meat and bam my stomach went flat you know just like in an instant just like that striped dress you're gonna see that picture the pink striped dress where I look big you know my stomach was so bloated and then like within a month it was flat that was only a month's time just all that inflammation was in my stomach it's just gross so anyways so I, I still do fast I just don't do the extended fast because um, my body just went under stress you know and I have an autoimmune issue you know ever since the mold um, the toxic mold thing that happened to me so um, I have to be careful on different fasts I do different things I eat because that triggers my immune system like just like that and instead of doing good it does bad for me it just doesn't work for me so anyways so um, the fasting that I do do right now um, I fast 18 hours a day so I'll probably eat my last meal like around 3 p.m. and then the next day after my full 18 hours then I may eat a little something like maybe bacon or eggs or something and then for dinner I'll have my meat and then that's where I cut it off again no snacking no nothing so I'm only gonna eat either one meal or two meals so if I do two meals that's when I fast 18 hours then I'll eat something and then within that six hour window I'll eat again close it and if I just eat one meal it's gonna be in that 24 hour just one meal a day and that's it and it works fine so what about else did I want to add here? So, um, oh, I also add, uh, wanted to add that um, I do not drink alcohol. Um, I mean, I never was a drinker. I mean, yeah, I've tried it before and stuff, but it's just not for me. So my husband and I, we both, we do not drink alcohol. Um, I know like there's some, you know, carnivore people out there where they need their wine or whatever, but it's just, I look at it this way. If it doesn't benefit me in any way, then what's the point of shoving it in me? You know, I'm just sticking in all these empty calories. I'm going to eat what's going to benefit my body. And right now, for me, meat is my medicine. So, um, so yeah. So, and then also I want to add, you know, with all these diets that I have done, you know, the paleo, the, um, not, I don't want to say keto because I still do keto sometimes. Like if we go out somewhere, I mean, I can't just grub on meat, you know, go to, you know, this wedding party or whatever and just take all the meat, you know, I'm going to, Maybe just have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, just kind of stay away from the carbs. So then I'll kind of call it keto. Um, but yeah, you know, so my husband done all these different <laughs> diets with me, the vegan, the vegetarian, the paleo, you name it. It's just, it's just so funny. He supported me all the way in, in everything I did. Um, he didn't even need to, he doesn't need to lose weight. You know, he's just always, you know, had a good physique. So, but, um, but yeah, he did it to support me. So it does help when your partner is doing it with you because you guys support one another you know now getting the kids to do it it's a hard thing it's hard um, you know I try to you know make sure my son eats healthy but he'll say did you make that and I say yeah I'm not eating it because I know it's healthy you know <laughs> these kids crack me up so anyways let's see anything else I did not share with you so now my husband's story so a month Ago, before my husband joined me on carnivore he was still doing keto so he was still having his morning smoothies with the whole vegetables um, the spinach the kale you name it god he would throw everything in there I think he would throw the whole house in there and blend it and drink it anyways but um, sadly he was he was still having body pains um, he had this like kind of this hernia pain um, and then he'd have this sciatic pain um, nerve pain like in his butt muscle there'd be times We'd be out in public and he'd fall to the ground in pain trying to stretch that pain out. And I'd think, what is wrong with you? Get up off the floor. Oh my gosh, you know. But, um, you know, in his young days, he used to play soccer and whatnot. So, so these pains are sneaking up on him with the food that's causing inflammation. And um, every morning he would wake up sneezing with tons of allergies. Um, after he finally gave, gave up that nasty green smoothie, all his aches and pains and allergies just disappeared. It was just so weird. Um, so ever since then, like he never really touched, he never touched a vegetable again, ever since then. 
I mean, not even, I mean, just the weeds on the ground, maybe, you know, pull the weeds and stuff, but that's about it. Um, you know, he doesn't, like I said, he doesn't need to lose weight, but he, you know, he works out only two or three days a week. And the same with me, oh, we don't work out that much. Um, before, you know, when we were doing that clean diet, you know, I told you we used to work out like seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. Now, I will just drop my son to school, you know, since the gym is just right there, I'll just go to the gym, just walk on the treadmill, maybe 30 minutes. If I have a friend next to me, we may make it an hour because we're chit-chatting the whole time. And that's it. I, I used to do heavy lifting and weights and strenuous things, but I noticed those things was causing too much inflammation in my body when I lift weights, um, too much pain in my joints, and then the scale starts going up. I mean, I don't really care much about the scale, more like how my clothes fit. Like, you see those pictures of when I was 255? Yeah, it was big because my stomach is out there, you know? 135, yeah, I look very thin. I mean, I look like I could be healthy, but at 155, I feel my best. And I feel that I look my best too, you know, my face is more filled out. Like when I was 135, you know, there would be times I'd look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, you know, I'm like, my face is sucked in, you know, that just wasn't cute at all. So I like where I am at 155. This morning I woke up and I was 150. So, I mean, the scale is gonna fluctuate. You can't be like, oh my God, I came to pound, you know, but it's good to, I think it's good to weigh yourself and then that way you could say, hey, wait a minute, wait, why did I gain five pounds? What did I eat different yesterday? You know, maybe it was that that caused it or that that caused it or what did I do different, you know? Oh yeah, you know, I did go lift some weights with so-and-so. This is what caused this, you know? So you, I mean, I, I, I think I'm a slave to the scale, but for a good reason to just kind of track, you know, what is causing that gain, you know? So maybe someday I'll throw in the garbage, who knows? So anyways, um, like I said, my weight loss didn't happen overnight. This journey didn't happen overnight. I didn't expect to get sick, but you know what? There was a reason why it happened. Had I not gotten sick with that toxic mold, I would have never found carnivore. I would have never heard of, you know, thought of trying keto, you know, cause you hear all the negative things that, oh, you're gonna lose your gallbladder or you're gonna die or you're gonna have a heart attack from eating all that fat. Who's eating all that fat? You know, I'm just eating fatty meats. You know, I'm not like eating gobs and gobs and drinking, you know, fat. You know, people just get got the wrong concept of keto and carnivore. It's just not like that. I mean, do I look like I'm gonna die? Do I look like I'm gonna have a heart attack any minute? I don't think so. I don't feel it, but people are gonna say what they're gonna wanna say. And um, I have people that tell me now that I look so skinny. I don't look skinny. I'm 155. I have curves. I'm gonna even, post a video of me I mean if this video is not too long but you know you'll see I'm not skinny I, I like where I'm at so yeah so none of this happens over over overnight so like I said you know those struggles happen for a reason you know and I believe a lot of it you know is God you know he puts us through these these journeys just so we would see this or see that you know just like you know when I was in that crazy marriage for 19 years you know and now I look back I'm like oh okay you know this is what's supposed to happen and now it's like this now you know had that not happened I wouldn't be here you know it's like all these different things so and that's just life but um but yeah I mean if you guys don't know who Dr. Ken Berry is do follow him he's on YouTube he has his Facebook page he's on Instagram he is everywhere that guy saved my life and I don't even know him personally <laughs> I only know him through YouTube and it's just he just caught my attention you know watching his videos that oh, I'm gonna try this I'm gonna do this you know what and and I did and I feel great and I like I said I've done all those different diets and I'm not carnivore there's nothing there's nothing I will ever try because this is it I'm at the end of my stop so there's nothing else that's out there that I will try to lose more weight or think I'm gonna get healthier because this is it. Carnivore is the way to go for me. So um, anyways, I know this video wasn't professional or anything, and but, but this is the real me. This is who I am. You know, I have notes. I mean, I, I'm not no professional um, actress or anything. You know, I'm sitting in my room <laughs> with this background and this ring light in front of me and my camera on and I'm just itching my ear, but <laughs> I'm a real person and I've, I've been through a journey and this is my journey like I'm saying I'm not saying that you know there goes that eye that's gonna water but some people would think I'm probably crying but I'm not but I almost did cry a couple of times when I was talking about my family members so back to the family members um they're all almost dead 
diabetes, heart attacks, cancer, they're gone. They're gone. So here I am, you know, trying to do the best I can to live, you know, as long as I can, you know, for my family, my kids, my husband, you know, whoever loves me, you know, I'm living for, you know, I'm and for myself, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to live for them. I, I want to semi long life and don't have to, you know, deal with sicknesses and medications and pills and whatnot, you know, at such a young age, I see so many people struggling. Oh, hey, if I didn't bring my medication, I'm shaking, you know, or whatever. And I don't want to be that person. And and you know and whenever it's my time I will go you know whenever God gives a say so it's time to go right there's gonna be an excuse for our death either way whether somebody kills us <laughs> or we get in an accident bad health I mean there's there's gonna be a reason for our death but the best thing we can do is not give up and just keep trying and keep living because life is gonna happen struggles are going to happen I mean Things are gonna happen. Relationships are gonna break up. People are gonna die. People are gonna lose their jobs. I mean, we just can't stop living. We gotta keep living. We gotta keep doing, you know, what is best for us. So, anyways, I think this video might be too long. You guys can fast forward through it, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> but I don't want my camera to shut off again because it's on record. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any questions, please comment below um if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe follow me on instagram follow me on my facebook page follow me on my regular facebook i don't care where you follow me um whatever question you have just ask me you know I i've been there done that been through it been through hell and back and i'm sure this is not the end of the road but as for my diet carnivore is the end of my road there's nothing after this and which which is probably why I never liked vegetables. Even as a kid, my mom would make it and shove it down my throat and I would just gag and throw it up, you know? I've always hated vegetables. Maybe it's just not in my DNA to have vegetables. I don't know. So, anyways guys, so um, yeah, thanks for watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to try to edit this video and it might be super long because I'm gonna add in all my weight loss pictures too. Um, you can fast forward through them. There's not much to look at. I mean, you're just going to see a fat me, a skinny me, a fat me, a skinny me, a fat me, a skinny me, pretty much. It's just pictures that I found that I had saved on my phone. But a lot of the fat pictures that I did have, I destroyed them years ago because it, when I was fat. Because I, hate, I hated looking at myself. But I didn't want to admit I was fat. I hated it. I just threw it away, threw it away, threw it away. So the ones that I do have, those are the only fat pictures I have of myself unless other family members have them and have it posted in their house and say, eh, look, she's fat. But yeah, my ex's family used to call me fat. So they used to call me Morty. And Morty means fat, which is kind of rude because who wants to be fat? Who wants to be unhealthy? Nobody wants to be that. So don't ever call someone fat. That's just rude. And, and somebody that's thin that wants to gain weight, don't ever call them skinny. That's just rude too. So anyways guys, have a good day, be blessed, and thank you for watching my long video. <laughs> so nice, so, so good to get to know you guys and you guys got to know how crazy I am. And I don't normally do my makeup like this every day. I did a makeup tutorial before this video, so I thought, I'm already done up, my makeup's done. Eh, hair's semi done, it's not that good, but it's all good. But um, I thought, you know what, let's just record today. That way I don't have to put on makeup. I don't put it on every day. <laughs> Anyways, guys, have a blessed week. Take care. Bye-bye.